February, Norway took a hardline stance by banning the selective breeding of flat-nosed pups like British Bulldogs and King Charles Spaniels, citing man-made health problems. In the UK, vets have called for a ban on using flat-faced dogs in advertising, suggesting it's a welfare crisis. And the Australian Veterinary Association wants a ban on breeding dogs with severe deformities. 1901, an American bought this bulldog for over £130,000 in today's money. But even back then, people noticed what breeding was doing to dogs' health. These creatures are both exaggerated and abnormal, their forelegs and shoulders being twisted and contorted to an appalling extent. So bulldog breeders in the 1890s were concerned about short lifespans, they report dogs with skin problems, and they report dogs with breathing problems. This is Enzo, a one-year-old French bulldog who's about to have surgery that could save his life. He's sedated, but not quite out for the count. Uh, yes, it's right by my computer, just there. Like many flat-faced dogs, he has restricted airways and too much soft tissue at the back of his mouth, making it hard to breathe. He's sucking in to get the air in, and his palate is probably flapping at the back of the throat. Almost every pug or bulldog that ends up at Battersea Dogs and Cats Home here in London needs this kind of surgery to treat what's known as BOAS. Ownership of flat-faced breeds has skyrocketed in recent years, so has the number of bad breeders, who are often more concerned by exaggerated features and profit than by the dog's health. It's perceived to be extremely cute to have a really flat face, and then perhaps unfortunately people aren't really thinking about the health impact of that until it's too late and then they end up here. Fortunately, some of these flat-faced breeds, and in particular French Bulldogs, live a much shorter life than other breeds of dog. Jack Russells live for over 12 years, but in this particular study they found the lifespan of a French Bulldog might only be five or six years. But what's the true cost of our obsession with them? Enzo is a stray, brought in off the streets to this rescue centre in London. Veterinary surgeon Claire Turner cuts a piece of the Bulldog's palate and then sears the wound to prevent bleeding. So this is the palette that we've removed. So it's quite a large amount of tissue for such a small dog. You can imagine if you've got that much flesh just covering the top of the airway. Oh, little guy. So this bit will bleed, just to warn you. She then cuts away part of Enzo's nostril to help with the flow of air. In 2015, surgeons here performed seven operations like this. Just five years later, that number had risen to 77. Pugs have a long, soft palate. Um, they can have excessive nasal tissue as well, but they also have a larynx which tends to collapse more, so that's the voice box. And in pugs, unfortunately, it tends to, um, instead of opening when they breathe in, it tends to collapse inwards. So actually, when they're breathing in and trying to get air in, they have more obstruction then. So this is Gino. Gino is a male pug and he's got pretty good breathing. So he doesn't have excessive thoracic wall movement here. When his nasal breathing is pretty quiet and he can also pant without much noise as well. And he exercises very well. Even when I use a stethoscope, he's got very little airway noise. It would be better if he lost a bit of weight because we know that weight is related to airway. So the fatter the pugs are, the worse their airway is. The different breeds are very different. So the bulldog has got a much bigger head, much heavier neck, and they tend to have problems more in the back of their throat with their soft palate. So they cause obstruction at the back of the throat, and you can hear that. So when the bulldog breathes, you can hear that vibration of the soft palate. So this is one of our affected bulldogs. She's called Ethel, lovely girl, but you can hear that noise. That's the soft palate moving as she breathes. And this girl finds it easier to mouth breathe when she gets at all stressed. She's struggling to breathe a little bit more through her nose. She's got really loud noise at the back of her throat. This girl gets worse when it's hot, so much worse in the summer, and she's exercise intolerant. You've got the French Bulldog, where it's often more in the nose, so it's a nostrils that are very, very thin and very narrow. And then behind the nostrils, you've got too much tissue in that nasal cavity. They will have also have a thick palate, but it is the nose as well with the Frenchies. Cedric here is a lovely French Bulldog that is currently having an exercise tolerance test as part of his functional grading. So as part of the brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome, we like to try and work out how effective these dogs are. And we do this by also using this exercise test where we listen to the dogs and their airway before and after a three minute trot test. 
So Cedric has just been for his three minute exercise test. We're going to listen to him again. So things we're looking for is excessive chest movement here, which he doesn't have. We're looking for thoracic movement here at the inlet, which he doesn't have. We listen to the larynx and to the pharyngeal areas to see if there is any increase in the respiratory noise after the exercise. And again, you can hear he's quiet. And then the other thing that's nice with Cedric is that he's breathing through his nose quite easily after the exercise. We also look then how quickly they, they recover from the exercise tolerance test. All of the space where the air would normally run through the nasal chambers to the back of the throat and then down is all just compressed. And added to that, a lot of these dogs also have a very narrow windpipe as well, but it's all just squashed back into the face. There was an additional challenge, the long, expensive list of health problems that can add up to tens of thousands of pounds over the dog's lifetime. Flat-faced dogs, more formally called brachycephalic, regularly require surgery simply to have a better quality of life. So vet bills can be huge, like Mahima found out when she adopted her pug, Nala. So she's got not wide nostrils, so we had to actually take her to get a brachycephalic surgery, um, which did cost quite a fair bit, but that did help her to breathe um, better. Airway surgery, that can range anywhere from a couple of thousand dollars to even up to six to eight thousand dollars. Spinal surgery can run into the tens of thousands of dollars. If people aren't prepared for that, what we sometimes will see is people having to make really tough choices about what to do with their pet when they're really not well and they can't walk or they can't breathe. Brachycephalic syndrome is dogs that have been bred to have a shorter nose and often a shorter skull as well. So although they may look very cute from the outside, inside you've got a whole jumble of tissue and it causes obstruction. Because of the way they look they have other issues as well. So they have really um, protruding eyes that are very exposed. Particularly pugs unfortunately tend to get ulcers or damage to their eyeballs. They also have spinal injuries because they have um, abnormal vertebrae. So it is a whole syndrome. Understand uh, the breathing problem of brachycephalic dogs is really important for the owners because some owners might ignore the problem for a long time and letting their dog develop more severe symptoms. When you say, does your dog have airway disease, they'll say, no, it's a pug. No. So even though they're rec documenting the fact they've got all these problems, for them it is still normal for that breed and that's something we're hoping we can find. Before the surgery, we would take Betty for a walk and we would maybe only get five, ten minutes down the road and Betty would be passing out on the floor, literally fainting. Looking back now, it seems stupid of me, but I liked it. I liked her being needy. It felt cute. It felt like, oh, little baby, you know, oh, she's all out of breath. And knowing what I know now, I should have been ashamed of myself then. It was like really bad, but... I just would be fr frightened to buy another pug. It was a lot of money we paid for her and, um, and she's cost us a lot of money. Think carefully. A lot of vets say there are no good brachycephalic dogs and I think you're wrong because we've seen them and we've documented it, so they are out there. The public appetite for them is enormous, but you have to be careful. You have to go for parents that are health checked. What's really important is looking for dogs that can exercise, that can trot and run out and they can still breathe through their nose. We're looking for very little airway noise, preferably no airway noise, but as little airway noise as possible. And dogs that can tolerate being out in the summer as well. We also work with some geneticists and the reason that's really important is from a surgical point of view I'd rather not operate on these animals. It'd be much better if we can get the genetic tests up and running so we can breed the disease out. So when we started collecting data on these dogs years ago we've been collecting genetic swabs as well and it's looking really promising. As a geneticist, I felt I might be able to do something. So we set out to see whether we could tease the two apart, flat face and the breathing. And what I would like owners and breeders to help me with is collecting lots of DNA samples and just answering simple questionnaires about their dogs. They can do that through the breed clubs, but in addition, we're about to set up an emailing from the kennel club to known owners of these dogs. And if you get such an email, then please help. Hopefully we can get rid of some of the more severely diseased dogs and the whole population will get healthier.